Y'all, I have never reviewed a movie this fucking late ever in my goddamn life. But y'all wanted this shit. And you know I gotta give you the good. So let's go. Let's do this shit. <sighs> I'm ready. What's going on, everybody? It's the granddad of granddad, Wooly, and you are here again for another edition of Wooly Reviews Film Data. We got a movie review today, and we're going to be talking about the not brand new movie that didn't just fucking drop, because I was late as hell to the fucking party. I missed the fucking boat. I missed the fucking bus. I missed the goddamn alarm clock, and I was late as fuck, but it's all good because y'all wanted this shit. I asked y'all. Y'all said y'all wanted it, so I got to give it to you. So here we are, finally it's about that time for me to review one of the hottest and best movies that dropped this year. It just came out on Blu-ray and DVD, so I had to cop it a little bit. I ain't buy it, I rented the shit, but I got it and I watched the shit and now I'm finally ready to give y'all my thoughts. We are talking about the movie, the phenomenon known as Get Out. Now, Get Out is a movie that was directed and written by Jordan Peele, who is most known to be known to be a part of the TV show Key and Peele. He's a comedian. Funny dude, and I was really interested to see what he was going to do with this movie because I did see the previews, and I didn't know if this was going to be like a serious, like, horror thriller type movie or just a comedic spin on it, but it's kind of a little bit of both. So now we're going to talk about this movie, but we're going to do this a little differently, y'all, because since this movie's been out for so long and pretty much everybody's fucking seen this shit, there's going to be some spoilers in this shit. I'm going to just give you my full thoughts. I'm going to just run through this movie and tell you how I really feel. Spoilers and all. So you have been warned. If you like me and you ain't seen this shit, turn this shit off right now because I'm about to spoil a lot of fucking shit, but I'm about to get into this shit. So now let's talk about Get Out. And if it's a movie that I should be ashamed of, for waiting so long to see or if it's a movie that I wanted to just get out the fucking room because the shit was fucking whack. Let's talk about the shit. So the basic setup of the movie is this. We all know it. It centers around this young couple by the name of Chris and Rose. Chris is black. Rose is white. Interracial couple. You know, we see that shit all the time. These days ain't no thing these days. I'm in one right now. What do you know a fine ass Brazilian? That's kind of crazy. It's all good though. We love each other. Sort of, kind of, sometimes not. I'm getting off point. Point is this. It's about their relationship. And this is the point where she's actually going to take him to meet her parents. Everybody's been through this scenario. If you've been in a relationship for a long time, it's a nervous motherfucking time now for me parents love me i'm marriage material off the top give me 20 minutes with the parents they want me in the house all day every goddamn day true story check my references check my fucking references god damn it and chris is a little nervous about this y'all because one rose really hasn't told her parents about him that much and she hasn't told him that he's a black dude and that's some shit you gotta say off top you can't just you know throw that like in there at the last minute because you know they gotta prepare themselves because they gotta know if you a good nigga or a hood nigga i mean you know i mean they gonna still think you're a nigga deep down i mean they gonna be watching make sure you ain't taking shit but you know that's how it is that's how it goes sometimes you gotta prove yourself with these motherfuckers so they end up going to their parents house which is in the middle of fucking nowhere which is already a bad fucking sign but at the same time i mean you know they like, that's where they like to live reclusive and shit because they don't want to be around nobody apparently because they too good for motherfuckers it's all good i see what it is but fuck you so they go there and you know everything seems okay until shit gets weird and then shit gets from weird to kind of creepy and then from weird to kind of creepy to kind of fucking dangerous the nigga get me the fuck out of here these motherfuckers are crazy they trying to kill me that's the steps that it takes so now we're gonna see if this movie is good or if it's just not good but could have been good motherfucker i'm gonna just get to the point god damn it this movie is fucking good this shit is everything that everybody said it was plus more i love this fucking movie for so many fucking reasons first off the story itself is just so unique and creative and i don't know jordan peele i for some reason, I think you've been through this shit some way, somehow. You don't just think of this shit out of nowhere. You don't just create this shit in your mind. You had to reference some real life shit. I know you want to enter a relation, relationship. You need help, nigga. Let us know. We can help you. I can't help you, but somebody can help you, goddammit. But this fucking plot and the way the story goes is so fucking dope. And I really like the fact that Peel is tackling these racial undertones that really are true and do happen when you are in an interracial relationship and you are, are dealing with, you know, meeting the parents or meeting people who aren't used to being around certain black people or they just have a certain perception of black people so they act a certain way accordingly so like when you got the scenes like when they were going to the parents house and the cop pulls them over and then the the, the cop asks the black dude about his id and he wasn't even driving that shit happened to me before that's fucked up they ask you for your id and shit they don't they want to see if you're doing some foul shit even though you ain't doing foul shit they gotta check and make sure just because they born
bored as fuck. But that happens in the fucking movie, so like, there's a lot of relatable shit for me on that shit. Also, when they meet the parents, you know, it's sort of like, you know, they try too hard to be cool. They try to say all this like shit to like try to act like they down and shit when they can just be a regular motherfucker. You ain't, you trying too much with the handshakes and the lingo and the slang and all that shit. Chill out with all that shit. Just be a normal motherfucker. Be you. You an old white dude. Be an old white dude. I don't need you to validate my fucking coolness with your shit, nigga. That actually makes it weird and awkward. And then when it comes to the scenes like where the dinner party happens and, you know, Chris is pretty much the only black dude there minus another black dude who has been brainwashed. I'm going to get to that. But basically, you know, he's the only real black dude there and he's around all these other rich white people who pretty much just have this sort of perception of black people and they pretty much don't give a fuck. They don't hold their tongue and they just say stupid stupid ignorant shit because they think they're being like harmless but at the same time they're being retarded as fuck so he deals with that shit throughout the movie and i've been through that shit personally too so it's like watching this movie i was like i've been through all these scenarios jordan peele you know me or you know what it's like to be me and this nigga's been through that shit too probably so it's cool that he just tackles those issues and he hits them directly on the head because like if you look at this shit you if you a black dude you have been through at least one if not two if not all these scenarios that happens to this dude chris in this movie and you can fucking understand that shit to the t now let's get into the crazy part of the movie now here's the thing about the movie so chris goes to the fucking parents house and you know everything starts to get weird they start to ask these weird questions and shit and then it starts to get even more crazy when chris gets hypnotized by uh rose's mom because apparently, you know, he's a smoker and, you know, I ain't a smoker either. So I ain't in this field. So I'm safe from this shit. But he smokes cigarettes and she don't like that. So she was like, yo, I got this technique that can help you stop smoking. And Chris like, nah, I'm good. And she's like, all right, nigga, we gonna see if you good. And then like the night after that, she catches him because he's trying to go out and smoke on the low low. And she catches his ass. So she's like, yo, why don't you come up in the room real quick? You know, talk to me. We gonna like, you know, just talk it out. I want to get to know you a little bit. And Chris like, all right, cool, I guess. And then before you know it, she's sitting there with a cup of tea, just spinning the shit, clanging the fucking spoon against the side of the shit, asking him these weird ass questions about his mom who fucking died in a car accident while he was sitting home watching cartoons and not doing a motherfucking thing. And then, you know, he just like finds himself just not being able to move. And then he's crying and then he's paralyzed. And then he sinks into the fucking floor and he's in some place called the sunken place looking at her from this big ass Zenith TV that he don't even know where the fuck he got to. And like, this point on his motherfucking nose, he's in some deep shit Chris needs to get the fuck out of there right fucking now but he can't because he doesn't know what the fuck's happening because he wakes up and he realizes it was a dream but really it wasn't a fucking dream but this ain't no biggie shit this is some real shit and you need to get the fuck out Chris and from that point he starts to realize that more and more shit is weird like there's like a maid and a groundskeeper there and there are two black people there are only other two black people there but they weird as fuck because they just stand there and they look and they talk weird and they just act like they ain't normal because they ain't fucking normal at all. And, you know, Chris is like, yo, what's with all the black people here? Every black person I've met here is weird as fuck except for me. Something's going on in this goddamn town and they ain't telling me shit for some reason. I need to get the fuck up out of here right goddamn now because shit don't feel right. And now we're going to talk about his best friend who goes by the name of Rod, who is probably one of the funniest motherfuckers I've heard in a movie in a long time. This is his best friend. He works for TSA, and he's pretty much just watching Chris's dogs while he's out doing this shit. But Rod has a hunch that something's not right because Chris... Stops answering his phone after the weird shit starts happening. He doesn't come back when he's supposed to. And then he's just figuring out like, yo, he's going to this weird ass place with these weird ass people. He's probably going to end up being some kind of just like fucking sex slave for these crazy white people. Because that's what he's thinking. But at the same time, Rod is like the friend that we all need. Because, you know, most people would think, oh, something happened, but he'll be back or it's all good. Rod realizes that once Chris was gone a little too long and not answering his phone, something was up. And he did not quit until he figured out what the fuck happened to his homeboy that's a real friend that's a real nigga from the streets who knows like yo some shit's going down i gotta figure it out because that's my boy and you can't let your homies go out like that you gotta know what's going on with them 24 7 because you know shit gets real sometimes and you gotta be there for him so it's really dope to see that he was just so persistent in trying to figure out what happened with his friend which plays really really into the actual ending of the movie i'll get to that too actually i'm about to get to that right now so here's how the ending goes or pretty much the the, the last third of the movie where it really gets fucking crazy so look Lo and behold, it finds out all this crazy shit's happening. Chris says, oh, this shit's fucking crazy. I'm about to get the fuck out of here. Rose, come on, we need to get out of here. Your parents are crazy. These people are crazy. Let's fucking go. And Rose is like, yeah, let's fucking go. Blah, 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 this and that. Turns out, Rose, his fucking girlfriend, is actually the one who is actually really behind this shit. Well, not fully, but she's an essential part of all this bullshit that's going on. Basically, she goes out to the city, she dates black people, and then she brings them back to her parents for her parents to fucking 
brainwashed and then fucking take their bodies and swap them with old white people who are fucking trying to die or trying to keep living because they're about to fucking die, swaps their brains out so the old white people can live life as black people and they can be black and young and cool and all the shit that they couldn't be when they were white folks. That's fucking crazy as shit. And that's who actually the housemaid is and the housekeeper is. It's the grandma and the grandpa. They were old as fuck and now they're black people living in the house cleaning and, and doing gardening and shit. What the fuck is happening in the city? And Chris is next in line to be a candidate. He was actually sold, like, like some slave shit. He was sold to this blind dude who was a, like an art dealer who's now going to be Chris because Chris is also a photographer so he wants Chris's eyes. It's some crazy fucking shit. And all this shit's happening and it pretty much gets to the point where Chris is almost, it's almost a wrap for this motherfucker, but he finds a way to escape. He finds a way to get out of that area before the operation happens. He kills everybody in the fucking family. The dad, the mom, the brother crazy ass, even Rose. Well, he, well, he, ain't, he ain't killed Rose. He, he was trying to kill Rose. He was trying to choke her out after the grandpa shot Rose, because if you take a picture in their faces and like the flash, like apparently takes them back into their real lives or some shit or the reality. So for a split second, they're back to who they usually be. And you know, he killed, he shot Rose and then grandpa shot himself with the black dude who was grandpa shot himself. And then, you know, Rose was clinging on for life, but Chris was like, nah, I'm killing you right now. You put me through enough bullshit. And he tried to choke her out. And at the last minute, sirens start wailing and you think, oh my God, the fucking cop showed up. Chris about to get locked up for all this bullshit. But it's actually his friend Rod at TS motherfucking A to save the fucking day, get him the fuck out of there and get him away from that bullshit for him to realize that maybe sometimes you got to watch out who you go with. Because like sometimes, you know, it looks good. The, the, the walls might be nice and everything like that, but sometimes it comes with a price and that price is sometimes your fucking life. And there was also an alternate ending where actually when the car, the sirens roll up, it actually is the cops and Chris actually gets fucking locked up, which is some fucking bullshit. But yo, I'm glad that they went with the ending where Rod shows up because he needed a happily ever after. That motherfucker been through enough shit he needed to get his friend to come get him and take him out of that shit and for him to just fucking just like deal with this shit on his own times and just kind of forget about the whole bullshit because god damn it if i went through this fucking shit i swear to god y'all i would never be in a relationship ever again and because of this shit i got rid of all the tea all the mugs all the spoons ain't none of that shit allowed in this house because i can't trust my girl i mean she she from brazil but she caucasian brazilian and sometimes she might flip one day her and the family would just flip on me one day so i gotta be prepared for that shit so no spoons no tea no mugs none of that shit we eating cereal out of our hands i don't give a fuck if you don't like that shit that's how it goes in this place that this shit blows over but like i said this movie is fucking fantastic and i really really i'm upset that i waited so long to see it but this is a fucking dope ass movie if you have not seen this shit like me but prior to this check it out because it is dope jordan peele came up with a very clever very thrilling very exciting very unique movie and i see why everybody was going crazy over it because it has all these elements it's got suspense it's got thrills it's got some horror aspects it's got some comedy up in here and it just has a really unique and dope story and it also talks about something that's very real a very very serious and very real racial undertone when it comes to interracial relationships and meeting the parents and how white people think about black people and vice versa all that shit is tackled and done so well but so uniquely and this movie right here is the shit and yo, go check it out right fucking now. Go get it. It's on DVD. It's on uh, Blu-ray. Rent it. Stream it. Fucking do whatever you got to do. Watch this shit. If you've already seen it, watch it again after this. This will maybe motivate you to watch this shit again because the movie is fucking dope. I love this shit. Definitely check it out. So my final verdict, I'm not saying that Get Out is the shit and everything that everybody said it was plus more. All I'm saying is that Jordan Peele wrote and directed a great fucking movie for his first time doing this shit. He fucking knocked it out the goddamn park. All the fucking actors on here on point. I didn't even mention the actors' names. Fuck it. It don't matter. They all good. Goddamn, I ain't got time for that shit. All the people who acted in this shit, good fucking job. Go to IMDb. You'll see all their fucking credits. It ain't about that shit. It's about just this whole movie in general, and it's the fucking shit. I'm not even going to spend too much time. I've already said why I love this movie. Everything is dope. Go watch the shit, because all I got to say is that for me, Get Out is 100%. Granddad approved. Watch it. If you've already seen it, watch it again. If you ain't seen it, you're fucking up like I was. So go watch the shit. Basically, watch this fucking movie. But I got nothing more to say. Get out. It's granddad approved. So go watch the shit. And if you want an interracial relationship, or you're a black dude and you're a white chick, you might be looking at her sideways for a little bit, but hey, you, it'll get better. Just keep the tea out of the house and don't ever go to the parents' house for a good while. That's all you got to do. You'll be all right. Maybe. Maybe not. Flip it. 
All right, y'all, that's gonna do it for today's video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and drop a comment. Tell me what you think of Get Out, because I know you already seen it before me. This is the first time I've ever reviewed a movie so fucking long out of when it released, but God damn it, this one was worth it, and I'm glad that y'all told me to go ahead and review it, because I'm happy I did, because this shit was fucking dope. Love this movie. I think I might end up buying this movie because it's really, really cool, and it's just got so many things about it that I like, so many undertones to it, but yet just so much just general in your face things about it that really just makes this movie just a very unique and pleasant thing to watch. And God damn it, Jordan Peele, good job. Get out too, maybe? Nah, you good. You don't need to do another one. You can eat off this movie for a good while. Previous videos on the side as well as my latest single. Check that out. Show us some love. And as always, Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, Instagram. Links in the description below. And subscribe. Button on the screen. Button below. Will reviews twice a week. But this is like the fourth one this week. I've been killing it, y'all. And I know y'all love it. And, you know, also check out Gaming with the Granddad, CDK Studies, Indie Spotlight. All that info is below. And I got nothing more to say. So until next time I take my leave, granddaughter, get out. Shit, I sh I've been sleeping, y'all. I should have never, I should have fucking, I don't give a fuck. I was sick, I know, but I should have just took my sick ass to the theater and watched this shit because I would have felt a lot better after seeing this fucking beautiful ass movie. Fucking on point. I'm out of here.